Hello friends and welcome to Fonadis Golf. We have already seen the first two numbers of the four flight numbers and we're gonna try to uh, enter the turn and fade territory but for that we still need to learn one physical concept which is called the gyroscopic precession. What, what it is and what's, why does it affect us. Um, everybody for the fact of beam movement has some what we call usually inertia which is called the linear momentum, okay? If we multiply the mass of the body times its uh, speed, we get that linear momentum. The higher it is, the better it resists the alterations on, the on its velocity or its direction because of external forces. Of course, uh, if, if a disc is heavy and is traveling very fast, it's harder to modify its, its direction. Mm. But the disc is also spinning, so if we have a rotation, we, can, we have a second uh, momentum called the angular momentum, which is called by this rotation. The formula is very similar. The angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the rotational speed. We change mass by moment of inertia, linear speed for rotational speed. Rotational speed. Instead of saying meters per second linear, in linear speed, we say radians per second. So the amount of rotation per second. The faster it rotates, the more inertia it will have. This is like a like a flywheel, you know? We have to we want to to store energy on the fact of rotating. So uh, the the rotational speed is the first term. And we also have to multiply it by the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia is very similar to the mass, but we sum the all the particles of the body, the mass of its particles, but we multiply it, uh, each of these particles by the distance to the, that point of rotation. So the mass that it's farther away, uh, it weights more on that average. So it's important not only to have mass, but to have it far away from the axis of rotation. Those two discs are, two of them, I guess that they are all 173 grams. So they are exactly the same weight. But as you can see by the geometry, this one has a wider rim and this one has a very narrow rim. This is a 13 speed and this is a 1 speed. So in that case, the mass is located mostly on the outer part of the disc, far away from the center. And in this case, the mass is quite well spread around the disc because the, the, the rim is quite thin. So having the same weight, this will have a higher moment of inertia than this one. So if you want a, a, a flywheel, this, this is more effective to store energy on a, on a, on a rotation, no? that this one, the putters have always uh, thinner walls. Okay, we have that uh, angular momentum, and why is it important? Why do you <laughs> tell it to me? Uh, well, it's important because it has some interesting uh, physical applications. Uh, one of them is very well known, it's, the, it's called the, the skater's paradox. When a, a skater is uh, turning on the ice and he has his open arms, then he closes his arms and is, he starts spinning very, very fast. Why is it? Because when he has uh, the open arms, his moment of inertia is quite big because of the weight of their hands and their arms are far away from the axis of rotation. And when he closes his arms, of course, the, the conservation of the momentum makes that the, if the um, moment of inertia is smaller, the angular velocity will be higher, so it will increase its angular, its, uh, angular speed, its rotational speed. So, uh, angular moment is important because it uh, introduces what is called the uh, gyroscopic rigidity. Okay. Uh, if we have a, a top, let's say, and we dance our top, the fact of rotating is a, uh, makes it able to resist external forces without falling to the ground. And that introduces that third movement in our disc, which is called the gyroscopic precession. Uh, that gyroscopic precession can be introduced uh, whether because of rotating on an axis which is not the axis of uh, minimum or maximum moment of inertia and more, more usually it can be introduced because of the uh, influence of external forces. 
Uh, let's look it with an example which is easier because it's very 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 graphical and very fun. This is a bicycle wheel. You can find this experiment even in some science museums because it's easy and quite counterintuitive. I'm gonna make it spin. Let's suppose that this is our disc. I'm gonna turn it like this so it's spinning uh, clockwise. It is our right hand, back hand. And I'm going to introduce a moment, let's say I'm going to introduce a nose down moment. Let's see what happens. I just introduced nose down. <laughs> and the disc turns to the right. Let's, let's repeat it again. I'm going in this direction. Just nose down. <laughs> I can't avoid it. The wheel turns to the right. It's, it's quite strange. It's quite counterintuitive. I'm going to flip it upside down. So now it's turning to the left. So this would be a forehand, a right hand forehand. It's counterclockwise now. And I'm going to do the same thing, just nose down. <laughs> I swear I'm not doing it on purpose. It's unavoidable. Nose down. <laughs> and it turns to the left. Okay, so we have seen that the fact of uh, being a gyroscope makes that when we want to apply a second moment to uh, that angular moment that we, all, the, that we already had, the body introduces a movement, which is called the precession, to, let's say, absorb that external moment. Uh, when the top is spinning, the, act, the force of gravity wants to tumble it down to the ground, of course. But for the fact of being spinning, that force is uh, let's say absorbed as a precession. The precession is that uh, cone-shaped moment uh, movement of the axis of the top that makes it spin, 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 spin like this, and the axis is tilting like this to absorb that external forces. Of course, there comes a moment. It can be quite uh, quite a severe that angle. It can go almost horizontal, but there comes a moment where, the, of course, the friction may reduce the, that uh, rotational um, speed and, the, of course, the, the top f uh, ends up falling to the ground, but it can absorb a lot of, a lot of external moments this way. Even the Earth has a precession. We have the, trans the translation, which is, of course, moving around the Sun, the rotation, which is, of course, the rotation of the, of the Earth, and the precession, the axis of the Earth, is turning, slowly turning, on the same direction of the uh, rotation. Why? Why is it? Why does it happen? Uh, remember, when we studied the, you know, the spin of the disk, uh, we could represent that uh, angular momentum with a vector, with a pseudo vector. Uh, the length was the, the uh, vectorial product of the force that we apply times the position vector, so the, the radius of, of the, of the um, torque that we are applying. Uh, and the, 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 it was the bigger when it was closer to the 90 degrees angle. So we had a, an arrow and it was pointing downwards because we applied the right hand rule. Remember, with our finger we follow the, the movement of the disc, like this, on a right hand, back hand, and the thumb indicates that it, this arrow is pointing downwards. If we introduce a second mo moment, this time we're gonna, mm, for, for instance, uh, put a, a nose down moment. If we follow this movement with our right hand, our fingers like this, the thumb indicates that we're going to introduce a momentum pointing to the left. If we sum a big arrow to the down and a small arrow to the left, the result is, on the diagonal, is a long arrow downwards and a little bit to the left. So if the axle tilts to the left, the disc tilts to the right. Okay, so you can see that uh, the, that movement in the angle of the axe of rotation, this is what is called the gyroscopic precession. There is another fun fact, which is the, uh, the way that helicopters fly. Uh, a helicopter has the, the rotor on the top part, and it has some actuators that can change the angle of attack of the rotor, on, even on, on every face of the, of the circumference. So let's say that you want to fly forward. What do, should you do? Okay, I would say, uh, okay, I want to fly uh, forward, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, 
make more severe the angle on the rear part of the cycle so I'm flatter on the top part so this way it will it will have a higher lift on the rear part of the helicopter a lower lift on the front part and this way I'm gonna tilt the helicopter and gonna advance sounds reasonable so uh, if the rotor is turning let's say uh, clockwise if you do that what that you're gonna do is move to the right <laughs> because of that gyroscopic precession uh, of course the the helicopter controls are already adjusted to that effect and what they do if you want to go forward they elevate the angle of attack on the part on the left part of the of the circumference okay so we will have to keep in mind this gyroscopic precession when we study the turn and the fade that will follow follow because when we introduce a moment because of the of the glide of the or the lift should be called we, we will have to keep in mind that gyroscopic precession effect that we will alter the shape of our flight. Let's see you in the next chapter here in Fauna de Golf.